Welcome to the MAKE course, I'm Rudi Schlaf. In this tutorial we will discuss basic logic and boolean operators on the Arduino. Before we get started with the tutorial I want to point out that you need to know how to hook up a button and a LED to the Arduino. If that's a mystery to you please go to eAwesome and click on the videos tab and here you will find my six introductory videos that get you started with the Arduino. So what you need to achieve is to hook up a button and an LED to the Arduino and this is shown here in video number six. So please watch these videos and then uh, you're ready to do this tutorial. Before we start playing let's have a look at elementary logic gates. So there are three basic logic gates from which one can build all other logic gates. And there we have the inverter, it's also called the NOT gate, and then we have the AND gate and the OR gate. AND and OR are different in that they uh, have an output that depends on two inputs, while the NOT gate has an output that only depends on one input. Now what's happening at the output Z is shown in the truth tables that are associated with these three gates. So in the NOT gate, when we put a 0 on the input A then we get a 1 on the output Z and if we put a 1 on the input A then we get a 0 at the output. So this gate simply uh, flips the input and so 0 becomes a 1 and 1 becomes a 0. Now the AND and the OR gates they have two inputs and so we have two columns here for the inputs and of course also we have then four lines because we have four combinations that we can put on the input 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. And the output Z now in the AND gate is only 1 if both of the inputs are 1. The OR gate on the other hand has only a 0 at the output when both of the inputs are 0. Is one of the input or both of the inputs 1 then we get a 1 at the output. Let's put this to the test. I whipped up a quick simulation with iCircuit. If you're interested in this app, you can go to iCircuitApp.com and download it. It uh, runs on most platforms. It doesn't cost much. It's a really great tool to do a quick and dirty simulation of electronic circuits. Okay, so here we have the AND gate. And you remember from the truth table that you just saw that the output here is supposed to be zero if uh, one or both of the inputs are zero. And so this here is conform with that truth table because both of the inputs right now are off. So we have here zeros at the input and the output is a zero. So the LED is off that I hooked up. Now you know by now that putting five volts on the input of a logical device is a one. And so I can here by simply closing a switch I can put a 1 on the input and you see here it got it turned green and this means now that the logic gate, the AND gate sees 5 volts on the input B. And of course we still do, don't get anything at the output because it is an AND gate and so both of the inputs need to be 5 volts. And so we can close this one and now you see we have your 5 volts at the output and the current is flowing and the LED is on. Okay, let's check out the OR gate. We can just pop in here an OR gate and you see how wonderful this iCircuit app is. It updates live, so you just change your circuit and you uh, then see what's uh, happening directly in real time. And so the OR gate, of course, when both of the inputs are high, then we still get, uh, we get 5 volts at the output and the LED is on. Now when I open one of these switches or the other one, per truth table the output should be 1 and we see here it is still 1. So I have to open both of these switches and that's the condition where we get 0 at the output. You may wonder why we discuss all this. These gates they are very interesting if you have various input conditions and you need to react to them in some kind of device. A very simple example of a, a useful application of an, an OR gate would be in a car that has a check engine light and 
So you could have several sensors on the engine that would, in case of trouble, put out a 1, 5 volts, and then you could hook them just up to an OR gate, and if one of these sensors comes on, then your warning light would be on. When it comes to implementing a logic gate, there are actually two main ways to do it. One is you could simply go to a integrated circuit manufacturer and buy yourself some gates. And so I went here to Texas Instruments and so here they have the CD54HCT08 chip. I always love how they name them. And this contains four two input AND gates. So let's go to the data sheet and here we go. And so when we look at this uh, at the schematic of this chip you see here we have four of these gates as you just saw them in the simulation. Down here is the truth table. So you could set up an account with Texas Instruments and order yourself a few samples and then put this chip on your breadboard and hook up the LED with a resistor to the output and two switches on the inputs and then you could yeah, just do what I just showed you on the uh, simulation. So this is one way to do it. The other way is of course to use an Arduino. Before we start playing with the Arduino we need to build a little bit of hardware. I'm starting out with the setup from the EE Awesome video number 6 that demonstrates how one can control a LED with a switch. And so for demonstrating an AND function, an AND comparison operator on the Arduino, we need two input sources and of course this switch here is one input source and so we need to add a second switch as a second input. You just saw it in the simulation. So we build essentially the same thing here on the Arduino. Uh, as we saw in the simulation, but the uh, gate is really replaced by some software on the microcontroller. Okay, so in this great software called Fritzing, one can simply duplicate components and then put them on the breadboard. So this is really a wonderful way to memorize your or to eternalize your Arduino setups. Uh, so you, you get the idea. So here I'm putting the jumper to the ground rail, which is here connected to the ground connector on the Arduino. And now we need to connect the other end of the second switch uh, with this jumper to pin number three. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to grab them. Okay, so now it's connected to three. And now I hook this up to the other end of the switch. So now we have a switch on pin 2 and a switch on pin 3 and the LED here is on pin 8. Here you see it in the flash. So these are the two buttons. That's the LED. Buttons are hooked up to pins 2 and 3 and the LED here is on pin 8 with the red jumper. Now you see here I don't press any button. The LED is off, so if I press one of them, still off, the other one still off, and I press both buttons, now the LED starts blinking. So that's essentially the AND function that we know now, right? Only when both of the, the inputs of the gate are on, then the LED is blinking. Okay, let's have a look at the code that makes this tick. This is the Arduino sketch. It is based on the uh, Arduino sketch that we used in the previous video, uh, number two, about conditionals of the Intro to Programming series. The main difference here is that I added another button. And so this button here is on pin number three. So I called it button two and I associate that with three. And so then down here, of course, we need to also initialize this uh, pin as an input that it can read out the button. And we also need to give it that pull up resistor that makes sure that the uh, input is high if we don't press the button. Remember, the button connects the input to ground, so pulls it low. So whenever we press the button, the input is zero, and when we let it go, the input is one. This is achieved with this digital write command that sets button, the button pin number two high. The other main difference now is down here in the main loop. If you remember in the video about conditionals, we simply read out the button pin in the uh, if conditional and then when the button was pressed, we blinked the LED and this is down, down here, right? So we write the LED pin high 
wait uh, 0.1 seconds and then write it low and wait another 0.1 seconds. And as long as the button was pressed, we looped here through this and so this made the LED blink. Now here we want to re that, that this here reacts on both of the buttons and we want to combine these two buttons now with an AND gate. And this is achieved by using this AND operator where we combine the, the readout of button 1 and the readout of button 2 into one logical output that then is used in that IF statement to make the decision whether to run this blinking here or not. Now the only complication here is that the digital read uh, button pin uh, uh, commands yield a zero when the button is pressed. Remember the button connects the input pin to ground and that uh, requires, if we just want to make this identical to the simulation of the AND gate, we need to invert this output from the uh, pin that we get a 1 when the button is pressed. And this is achieved by the NOT operator. And the NOT operator, that is this exclamation mark. So the exclamation mark here says, well, we take this here and we simply turn the output around. So if this here turns back a 0 when the button is pressed, then the NOT operator makes it a 1. If this here brings back a 1, then the NOT operator makes it into a 0. And so it's just inverse. Okay, so now if both buttons are pressed, we have here the, the statement 1 and 1. And you know now from the truth table of the AND gate, if we have two ones combined with AND, then the result is a 1 again. And so in this, po in this particular situation, when both buttons are pressed, when we compare now this result here with the 1, right? Remember this here is the comparison operator then uh, the output is also a 1 and then the if here thinks okay this statement is true so let's go ahead and execute the code that is uh, in between the uh, wavy parentheses. If one of these uh, two buttons is not pressed then the AND operator here will uh, yield a 0 and when we compare the 0 with the 1 then the if will get a, a false a result for the statement and will not execute this code and will simply go on here and set the LED pin low to make sure that the LED is off. And so this creates this behavior that when you press uh, one button or the other the LED is not on, only if you press both of the buttons the LED is on and that means we successfully achieved here the uh, implementation of an AND gate with the Arduino. Okay, now you know how to use the AND operator and the NOT operator. Now you remember there is a third one that is the OR operator. And with the OR operator it is very easy or very simple to turn this here into an OR gate. All we have to do is put the OR operator in there. And so uh, by putting two vertical slashes here that is the OR operator. We combine now the button readouts, the inverted button readouts with an OR. And you will see now when I demonstrate this that the two buttons now behave like an OR gate. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Here we go. So exactly the same setup. The only thing that I did is replacing the AND with the OR operator. And now you see when I press one of the button or the other button, the LED is blinking already and of course it still blinks when I press 2. So that's the behavior of the OR gate. Okay, now you know about the three Boolean operators. If you want to learn more about them, you can go to the Arduino reference and check out here the Boolean operators and here they are, the AND, the OR and the NOT. So if you click on here, then you get an explanation how it works. Okay, now you know about basic logic and Boolean operators with the Arduino. This concludes my video. Thanks for watching.